Our planet is like an onion, with loads of different layers. Right now, you're working through the Earth's crust. It's like a hard-boiled eggshell, thin and tough. It also takes up less than 1% of the planet's size. At a depth of 2 feet, you meet a digging buddy. The mole can create more than 60 feet of tunnel per day. Almost 10 feet down, and you recoil in shock. Is that an earthworm? And a 3-foot long one at that! You move deeper than 23 feet underground, which means you won't see tropical forest plant roots anymore. You get carried away, and at a depth of 39 feet, you nearly bump into a Nile crocodile. These reptiles dig the deepest burrows among all animals. You see an underground urban farm 108 feet below the surface. They grow vegetables and herbs there. At a depth of 400 feet, you still come across tree roots. But those are the deepest known ones. They belong to wild fig trees that grow in South Africa. Almost 510 feet underground, and you find a hotel room! Ah, that's the Sala Silver Mine, the world's deepest hotel built in a converted silver mine. At a depth of 940 feet, you see a road tunnel. That's the Eichsen Tunnel in Norway, and it goes under the sea. When you're nearly 1,300 feet under the surface, you reach the bottom of a water well. The Whittingding Well in the UK is the deepest hand-dug well in the world. It was built to provide a workhouse with water. At a depth of 3,300 feet, the pressure reaches 330 atmospheres. That's like four elephants piled up on your head or two pandas balanced on your thumbnail. You see a tiny worm living in gold mines when you're more than 4,000 feet down underground. In 2020, the world's deepest concert took place at a depth of 6,200 feet. The Shaft Bottom Boys performed at Vale's Creighton Mine in Canada. You move deeper and see the Homestead Gold Mine almost 5,000 feet below the surface. Before closing in 2002, it used to be the deepest and largest gold mine in North America. In 1965, scientists managed to detect and count tiny subatomic particles from the sun, and it happened in a lab located inside the mine. Just a bit deeper than that, and it gets freezing cold. That's permafrost, a thick, permanently frozen layer of soil that doesn't warm up even in the summer. It mainly occurs in polar regions and is the thickest in northern Siberia. About 6,500 feet below the surface, and you still meet some living creatures. Those are springtails, teeny eyeless insects that live in super-deep Kubura Cave in Georgia. The country, not the state. At a depth of almost 7,200 feet, you reach the bottom of Veronia Cave in Georgia. That's the world's deepest cave known to people. Now, if you had been in Creighton Mine in Canada in May 2005, you would have heard the deepest live radio broadcast. It occurred at the depth almost 500 feet deeper than Verona Cave. The deepest single-shaft elevator on the planet reaches 10,200 feet underground. And the deepest multicellular animal people know about lives at a depth of 11,800 feet in the Tautoa mine in South Africa. It's a tiny but incredibly hardy worm that can deal with extreme temperatures and dehydration. Four miles down underground is the average depth of the oceanic crust. It's the part of the Earth's crust that lies under the ocean. It's way thinner than the continental crust. At the same depth, in northeast China, you meet the deepest known microbe. You see the bottom of the deepest artificial hole when you get down to 12,000 feet under the surface. The Kola Superdeep Borehole is a mere 9 inches in diameter but the pressure at its bottom equals 4,000 atmospheres, like 54 elephants piled up on your head. More than 9 miles below the surface, and you find yourself in a pool of scorching hot molten rock. That's Yellowstone supervolcano's magma chamber below Yellowstone National Park in the US. You dig deeper. If you carry on like that, you might get through the crust soon. The oceanic crust is usually 3 to 6 miles wide. Well, the continental crust can measure 28 miles wide in some places. 
But even though the oceanic crust is thinner, it's way denser. That's why it floats lower in the mantle than the continental crust. The thickest parts of the crust lie under mountains. Mountain roots are less dense than mountains themselves. If you place the material they're made of on water, it would float like icebergs. The deeper you go, the hotter the crust becomes. At the boundary with the mantle, its temperature can reach 750 degrees. Most stone pizza ovens can only heat up to 500 degrees. Still, the crust is the coldest part of the planet. At a depth of about 18 miles, you reach the boundary between the crust and the Earth's upper mantle. There, the pressure reaches a mind-boggling 10,000 atmospheres. More like 130 elephants balancing on your head. The mantle is a layer of hot rock which makes up two-thirds of the entire Earth's mass and 84% of the planet's volume. It's 1,800 miles thick and is a mix of iron, silicon, magnesium, oxygen, and Play-Doh. Well, not the last one. The rock closer to the inner portion of the mantle is semi-solid, like caramel candy. The most exciting thing you see while traveling through this layer is diamonds. Geologists actually believe that all diamonds we mine today were formed in the mantle. Then, about 1 billion years ago, they were delivered to the surface by volcanic eruptions. The upper part of the mantle, along with the crust, is broken into huge pieces and resembles a gargantuan jigsaw puzzle. These pieces, known as tectonic plates, drift at a lazy speed of 1 to 2 inches per year. While moving through the upper mantle, you feel the temperature start to rise, from 900 degrees to 1600 degrees. And the deeper you go, the more you sweat. Near the core boundary, it's already more than 7,000 degrees. The lower mantle pressure reaches 240,000 atmospheres. That's already 3,200 elephants forming a tower on your head. At a depth of about 1,800 miles, you cross the boundary between the mantle and the outer core. This layer is heated up to 9,000 degrees, mostly due to the radioactive decay of uranium and thorium. Such a temperature is high enough to keep the outer core liquid. And even though the pressure there is almost 2 million atmospheres, it's still not strong enough to make the iron solid again. The outer core is 1,500 miles thick and is made mostly of iron and nickel in their liquid forms. This liquid churns in massive, turbulent currents and generates a magnetic field. It extends into space for 830,000 miles and protects our planet from the solar wind. In the outer core, the Earth's magnetic field is 50 times more powerful than at the surface. You are more than 3,000 miles down underground now. Congrats! You've reached the center of our planet, its inner core. It's a solid metal ball 1,500 miles across. That's about three-quarters of the moon's diameter. The inner core is immensely dense and spins faster than the rest of the planet. It's almost as hot there as on the surface of the sun. Scientists think that 99% of all the Earth's gold and platinum can be found in the inner core. It took about 500 million years for the inner core to form, which means it's younger than some parts of the crust. There's also a theory there might be an inner, inner core. If it existed, it would consist almost entirely of iron. Now, how the heck do you get out of there? Hmm, I don't know. See you next time! <laughs>